Nothing can stir up a conversation like the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's no doubt about it. This is the team. They are a lightning rod for controversy, conversation, whatever you want to call it. Everyone gets fired up at anything these guys do. And, and most recently, of course, everyone talking about the massive news of Iowa adding both Stephen Buchanan and Ja'Cory Teamer to their team. And, of course, those guys were on other teams. Stephen Buchanan was at Oklahoma. Ja'Cory Teamer was at Arizona State. And next thing you know, they're at Iowa. And the reason, and I partially, you know, for most of the fans, I understand why they're, they're surprised and even some questions like, wait, how does this happen? I thought there was the portal. I thought they had to do that. But really, like, outside of the fans, there's like a media narrative and there's other entities around that are taking this perspective that there's something that goes in violation of ethics or rules or this, that, and the other. And I really want, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the addition of Steven and, and Ja'Cory, of course. But I also want to talk about the narratives around this and why I think almost all of them, uh, actually all of them are just not the case or not really relevant to the conversation. But to start, you need to first understand we are in a totally new era of college wrestling. There was the era we knew before the transfer portal. And then there was the transfer portal era. And then there's now a new era after the transfer, por transfer portal era where with NIL and every other thing considered, and it's completely different even from how it was in the, just the initial transfer portal, transfer portal time. And so how is it different? Well, the transfer portal really should be renamed because it makes you think that's the only way you can transfer teams, but, it, but it's not. You don't have to go in the transfer portal to switch schools and to switch teams. You can do what Zach Glazier, what Ja'Cory Team, what Stephen Buchanan just did. They apply to the other school. They go to the other school. As long as they're not talking or being recruited by the, the staff or other wrestlers, they can do that, right? So there's narrative out there that there's rules being broken with these transfers. It's, it's not the case, okay? You may not like the mechanisms involved with how these wrestlers end up on these teams. That's, that's fair, and that's a, that's a very relevant opinion to have. But the notion, and I'm seeing it not just by fans, but media, hey, rules are being broken, there's tampering, there's this and that, these buzzwords kind of getting thrown out. Are, you should, before you accuse, you should acquaint yourself with the rules. And the rules are being followed. You may not like them. This is a don't hate the player, hate the game situation. But the rules are being followed here just as they're being followed with Zach Glazier going to South Dakota State in basically the same time frame in essentially the exact same mechanism. Same for Kobe Seabrick, same for Aiden Riggins. These wrestlers apply, they get into the school, they go to the school. And they, I assume they figure out the other details later on. And that's what happened with Ja'Cory, and that's what happened with Stephen Buchanan. So the, the notion that rules are being broken is not the case, so I don't understand the emotion there. There's also a second sort of, uh, you know, talking point about, you know, recruiting over and the team culture dynamic, but. I can't imagine being someone who says, I'm going to wrestle at Penn State, I'm going to wrestle at Iowa, I'm going to wrestle at Oklahoma State, and believes for a second that that team is not going to always work to get a better option in there, or not going to always work to put the best lineup on the mat, and to think that anyone is guaranteed a spot or in the lineup based on being there an extended period of time. It's just you're not paying attention to college wrestling if you think that's the case. That's not what happens at any program that is trying to win national titles. No program, program that's trying to win is, you know, saying, well, we recruited this guy and we're going to keep him in there. And you could find an example for every single team, but just, uh, you know, a year and change ago, Penn State was in a very similar situation with 165. They had a good 165 pounder. But Mitchell Messenbrink entered the transfer portal and you're not going to knock it, Mitchell Messenbrink, on your wrestling team. And so obviously you, you try to improve that, right? And Obviously, with Buchanan and Teamer and with other transfers to other teams, I'm sure there is some tension that that creates on the team. I'm sure there is some dissent. I'm sure there is some, you know, hurt feelings along the way. But I think you can't forget what the standard at these programs and what the charge is for these coaches. It's to win national titles. And there's no style points or degree of difficulty points for taking a, a scrappy guy who's really tough and taking him from scoring one and a half points to NCAAs to 20 points. There's no extra bonus points other than what they ultimately do. So if you can get a guy, you can take a wrestler that scores a point and a half at NCAAs and you can replace it with someone 
who could potentially score 20, that's a pretty easy deal, right? That's pretty simple. Another, a third narrative, a third angle that I think people are, are, are upset about is the notion of money. How much these wrestlers are making and who's making what. And for whatever reason, the, the figures around Iowa are just more broadly known. And, and a lot of the ones that are thrown out there, they're big, but man, by and large, they're accurate. I do have some level of knowledge. I'm not trying to ascertain this information. There's gravity. It comes, comes to me. It comes to many of the other entities that get out there. And for whatever reason, at the other programs, it's a tighter ship. I always got a leaky ship. A lot of intel gets out there. And there may be reasons for that. And you could say, well, hey, there's a lot of people that want that information and want to put it out there and make Iowa look bad. I agree that's part of the narrative. But there is a part of the narrative where it is getting out more routinely with them than with others. But back to the point of the money and who's getting what, frankly, I don't think that's anyone's business. And is this not what everyone was asking for, right? Everyone said, hey, NCAA, you guys are screwing all these wrestlers and all, all, what they were saying was athletes. They should be able to make money. Well, this is what you asked for, guys. This, and this is what it looks like. And it doesn't make sense. And it's maybe not fair. And life's not fair. The whole dynamic um, is, is sort of strange. And really, Iowa is the only one that's known. So it's only being compared to Iowa. And I understand that, you know, your everyone's sort of ideals of what college sports should be has really shifted. And maybe it's not what we want it to be or what it should be. But there's what it is, and everyone's wrestling and competing under the same rule set, and improving your team uh, shouldn't be maligned any more than any other team tries to do it. And you got, if you think for a second, at Penn State, at Oklahoma State, at the Ohio State, if you've got a, a wrestler that scored a, a point and a half at the NCAAs, and you're, you're trying to contend the next year, you're going to be doing something about that weight, okay? Maybe you think that guy had a bad tournament or whatever, or... Maybe you try to improve your roster and get a better wrestler on your team. That's, that's a conversation. That's something that is happening consistently at every school. And now ev not every school has the means and the ability to go and get that upgrade. But the ones that do, 100% of the time, try to improve that spot. And that's what Iowa did. Kobe Seabrick scored a point and a half last time he wrestled at NCAA. Zach Leisure scored a point and a half. Now they have two guys in there who are ranked number one, they could score 20 points. And that's just an exchange that's very obvious that, you, that you're gonna make if you have that opportunity. Um, so for, for Iowa, and, and the impact is, is real, right? And they go from a team that's 60 some points out to now, boom, you add 40 points and now they're, they're within 20 projected points. It's all projected, nothing guaranteed, of course, of Penn State. And now they're kind of the clear number two, whereas that was not as clear basically a week ago. And there is just a double standard around Iowa, right? Because no one really, the, 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 the clamors and the complaints were certainly minimized when Stephen Buchanan transferred from Wyoming to Oklahoma. It was a little bit of friction, not much. You didn't hear much at all. But then the Oklahoma to Iowa, he transfers to Oklahoma to Iowa, it's a big deal, right? And everyone says tampering and this and that when Buchanan and Jacory go from their schools to Iowa, but no one says anything about it when Zach Glazier and Seabricht and Aiden Riggins, these guys are immediately also on other teams. Because the reality is the, those teams aren't the ones that are drawn to IR fans. There, there's a bias against the Iowa Hawkeyes. And, and I think it's, uh, candidly, it's, a, it's an important part of the fabric of the sport that you have a team like Iowa with you know this loud, incredible fan base. And then you have the counterbalance of basically the rest of the wrestling universe that doesn't like them. And that's not just in the fandom, that's in the media, that's in other entities. My, um, my good friend, Ben Askren, you know, he, he takes uh, exception with, with how Iowa does things. But the reality is there, there's a little bit of a double standard. What Iowa's doing here, main thing I, I want you guys to know, the era is different. Things have changed. The rules are different. Even from a year ago, everything is different now. And so don't be surprised when you see some different things like number one's transferring at the start of the fall semester.